As results from the poll we had a couple days back, uh, the number one in demand guide first was Rhodes PvP. Obviously Arcane, so it's a pretty broad topic, so I will do my best to move point to point on the information you need to know the most to start winning fights in the roads, to farm the roads comfortably, you're not afraid of an encounter, you know what to do, uh, you know what abilities to use, stuff like that, uh, what kind of builds you should be using based on the goals you have. So, uh, with no further ado, let's get after it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is are you what priorities you have. Are you solo or are you with a group? Because first thing we're going to talk about is builds. And the most important thing before you decide what build you're going to take is are you with a group or are you alone? Now we'll start with if alone, your priorities are in order of importance, uh, from most important to least important. If you're alone, it'll be mobility. Sustain, defensives, and damage. Now with groups, there's three roles. There is knight armor, a guardian armor tank. There's DPS, which is generally cloth, and there's support, which is like your royal jackets, your judicators, your demon armors, things that boost your teammates. Uh, priority when you're in a group should be crowd control. Cleanse, group defensives, and least importantly, damage. Okay? Your goal when you're in a group, the most effective way of using Arcane is controlling the battlefield. So you're disrupting the enemy pushes, you're enabling your team's DPS pushes to succeed, uh, you're setting, you're dropping Judicator fields for their healing. So yeah, we're trying to prevent wipes, uh, use our Judicators, use our uh, Demon Armors defensively. We're trying to use our Royal Jackets to give cooldowns for our healers, for our DPS to be ready for the next push. And uh, that's the support position. So I would say the from best to worst, you know, uh, support's the best you could be doing as an Arcane in a group. DPS is probably the second best, and Tank is probably the least effective. Um the least impactful if you're on a guardian armor one hand arcane and nothing and you will have no impact but it's probably the least impactful okay so we're going to talk about weapons now these are prob my opinion in rank from best to worst uh weapons to use in pvp on the roads if you are solo the best being the occult uh the occult just it has no bad matchups because of the because of the e the t corridor uh, you have the advantage of being able to use two magic shocks because the, the punishment for most arcanes when you're in double magic shock is the mobility loss. Well, with a cult, without that mobility loss, because you have the E, which solves that problem, you are the freest to abuse the double magic shocks to its maximum potential. I have numerous videos on the channel you can reference of me abusing a cult, uh, many matchups. Um, and there's a lot of advantages using double magic shock, which we'll get into later when we get into matchups, weapon matchups. But uh, that's what makes ending ma our occult so strong, is that you can use double magic shocks. Alright, following occult, witch work. Okay, I'm sure you're noticing the pattern with occult and witch work. They both have a lot of mobility and CC control. Occult, I can get away, I can chase you. Witch work, I can... Now, this is the underrated part of witch work that most people don't realize. It's slow is nasty. It's a huge slow on the enemy. Uh, long duration, 8, 9, 10 seconds, high AP, huge slow. You can completely get away or chase someone down. It's a better slow than the even song, in my opinion. I mean, I don't have the exact mathematic breakdown here, but at least playing it, in my experience, I definitely noticed the witch works slow a lot more. Because um, the even song kind of relies on multiple stacks and multiple people around each other. The witch work, it hits anybody, bam, they're slow. So I like it alone. I like it, the only thing I like better than witch work is a cult. It helps you. You can run double magic shock with witch work because if someone gets close to you, uh, you have the big slow to help you. You have the bop to help you get them off you, and it's just really powerful. Uh, for all the same reasons as witch work, coming number three would be even song. Uh, really, not much to say. Even song is just a the only advantage even song has over witch work is it does nerf healing, which is good. It nerfs damage, which is good. But uh, I like the slow and witch work better. But even song, any arcane that is two-handed will have stronger magic shocks, higher, a lot higher damage. You'll feel it. it meteor magic shocks, 
they like have innate lantern built in. So even some has stronger magic shocks than the witch work, which you know situationally can be nice. Maybe when you're running with a group DPS. So you'll see a lot of my older videos where I'm running a group. So I'm running like an even song in the group because even song has strong magic shock. So in a group AOE DPS, it's pretty good. It has a pretty good damage E as well. Um, okay, so we've talked about even song. It's just a worse witch work, but better magic shocks. Uh, one next following even song. One hand arcane traditional to purge AOE purge a little tiny damage. Um, it doesn't really help you with mobility. The only mobility it helps you with is stripping other people's mobility, but because you're relying on hitting them with the orb, which can be difficult, it's kind of close range. By the time they're close range, they, they don't really need the mobility anymore, so it's not as good. Um, so like I said, you'll notice the you'll notice the theme here in these rankings is mo mostly related to mobility when you're solo. If it's, if it's good mobility, it's a good weapon. If it's not, it's not great. Um, the only reason I will rank one hand as high as I do is because stripping lifesteal buffs off people and off uh, attack speed buffs off dagger players and spear players is great utility for 1v1 matchups, but like I said, you are hurting on the mobility, which we don't like. Okay, after uh, one hand, we're getting to the bottom three. Okay, Great Arcane. Great Arcane, um, stronger magic shocks, <clears throat> two-handed weapon, stronger magic shocks. Uh, the problem with Great Arcane is that you're really feeling that mobility loss when you run the double magic shocks. Um, they nerfed it, and anyone that's stuck in the time freeze can't take any damage. Yes, you can line up and get your cooldown off your magic shocks while they're trapped in there. You can you can channel a cultist robe and heal. There's some things you can do in that time frame they're frozen to take advantage of it, but as far as like 1v1s, it's just it's not as strong as the other weapons. Um, it's, better, uh, it's a better option than the Locust Enigmatic, which almost contributes nothing to you as a solo player, but it is probably the worst of the uh, ones that actually do have utility to you as a solo player. So moving from Great Arcane, second towards Locust, at least from Locust E, you can derive a cleanse. How good is a cleanse if you can channel the E? Do you need the cleanse? I don't know. But you do get the defensive boost and that, that you know, uh, situationally I have taken advantage of that, believe it or not, where I, I channeled the Locust E on me when I had all my other cooldowns were all my other more important abilities were on cooldown and I was tanking some damage. Channel the E on yourself and get a defensive boost, you know, Com combine it with your potion. It's not bad. Um, better than enigmatic, which again literally does nothing. The only utility in the roads, there's literally no utility in solo player to have enigmatic E. It's just a, you can run double magic shock with it, like you can and use it as you could any arcane, just kite. But it's the worst solo. You don't really want to run enigmatic solo. Okay, now weapons. If we are in group, okay, now we're gonna flip the script. If you're in a group, well, remember I told you before, highest priority in the group is crowd control, cleansing, and group defenses. Well, what has all those built in? Enigmatic. Um, you'll probably rely on your, if you're running enigmatic, you'll probably rely on your armor for the crowd control. Um, either knight armor, you may be using like a knight armor, assassin hood. Assassin hood's a good combo with enigmatic to get your E back faster. It's true with Locust. Any of the arcane that are bringing, being brought because of their powerful E's, assassin hood is a good combo. Um, so enigmatic, just you can save your whole group, prevent wipes. I mean, Enigmatic is just the most powerful occult, uh, arcane weapon in general. It's the strongest, um, but like I said, when you're playing as a solo player, you're not really going to take, take advantage of that fact. But when you are in a group, Enigmatic is super strong. Um, so bring it. Uh, following Enigmatic, Locust, cleansing your whole group. The, the value of that is so high. Um, like I said, simple build. Be like Judicator, Assassin Hood, Locust. Super strong. Super strong. Prevent wipes from your group, save them, help assist a push so they don't get interrupted, disrupted during a push. The utility is off the charts. So, uh, Locust would definitely be the number two best arcane weapon in a group. A Colt? I would not, number three, I'd say a Colt. Over Even Song, over One Hand, over Witch Work, over Great. Yes. Because the ability to get in and out, you'll save people that are low, they can run back, get healed up. You'll save a lot of, you have a lot of opportunities to save people. Um, and also, just uh, sometimes, like, the surgical strike right off the bat is hitting the enemy hard. You just win right off the bat. Like you'll just win, win your first push. The enemy's not prepared. You occult in. You get in faster than they're ready for. You wipe them. Battle's over. So occult has a lot of utility in a group. That reason it's number three weapon for Rhodes PvP if you're in a group. All right, number four, Even Song. Even Song is number four. Um, I like the occult better because the occult does have. I feel like it's a little higher impact. 
Um, even song maybe before the nerfs, I would say, would be better than Occult, but, you know, the nerfs have been so massive now, only three stacks a lot at a time. Um, it's still very powerful. They're good. If you can, if you can land, make sure you get your max stacks value. It's good, but, uh, that, you know, in the middle of a battle, trying to, you know, sync up your E to make sure you're getting three people that are going to be near each other. It's just a lot to think about. It can be confusing, but if you do it, it's powerful, so for that reason, it is number four, but, uh, it can be a little more difficult to pull off. More trouble than it's worth sometimes. All right, number five, one hand. Purges, purge, 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 purge. Silence, purge. Double magic shock and healer. You purge him afterwards. He silences for like six, seven, eight seconds. Very powerful. Good group weapon. Uh, stripping enemies. You can really disrupt a push that way. Everyone's running in with their royal shoes. They're buffed to drop their damage in the DPS push. You can send that E from the one hand from far away and strip their buffs and really lower the DPS of the push. So one hand is number five for group PvP. Witch work, um, really not much to contribute to a group uh, as support. The only really viable role for witch work in a group would be DPS. Um, there are some builds like Royal Jacket, Cloth builds where you suck them into a hole. Carleon Cape, Triple Magic Shock. You get a good slow, good clap. I mean, there is builds that are viable like that, but that's pretty high difficulty. It's a lot of difficulty. It's hard to pull off the combos, and when you do, it's only a so-so clap. So, honestly, it's going to have to be the second to worst for group PvP. And the only viable spot for which work in a group will usually be a DPS role. Okay, worst, Great Arcane. Whoa, whoa, what am I saying, Great Arcane? Well, you can coordinate Great Arcane for claps. I see it on YouTube. Yes, you can, but it's very high difficulty. Usually, it's two players that have been playing together a long time in Discord, really highly coordinated. For average draw, you're never going to be taking advantage of a Great Arcane in a group. If anything, you're going to drop it, time freeze people, rest your group are going to drop their damage on it. Someone is frozen, do no damage, you get griefed all their, ruin their damage, jack everything up. It's just uh, most groups don't know how to take advantage of it. Uh, for that reason, Great Arcane is the worst run with a group. It, is, it has potential to be higher than worst. It could probably be a top four if utilized perfectly, but the chances of it being utilized perfectly in your average gameplay experience is so low that uh, I really can't give them credit for that. All right, now armor. Let's talk about armor. For solo, priorities would be cloth, probably the best. Uh, leather is probably the medium middle ground, plate being the worst. Now, why, why, why? Okay, simply, very simple. Cloth. Uh, Arcane already has some DPS issues. It's not a very high DPS weapon. Um, you gotta outplay the opponent, so we need all the damage we can get. So, cloth is the most appealing option. Um, you know, I even take it as far as running new sacks, uh, lanterns for more damage. Just feels better when you're hitting hard. And then you feel like you're more like, it feels more competitive when you're fighting the more metal weapons 1v1 or in group. So solo, we're going to go cloth first, high, best uh, armor type for the damage, just for the damage, that simple. Um, next would be leather, same reason. It's got less damage than cloth, so it's less appealing than cloth. Um, solo, there is, you know, some builds of solo arcane where you're running like assassin jacket. It's the highest DPS jacket, leather jacket. Uh, you get the firestorm or the invis and you're running like all cooldown passives. Cooldown passives are okay for arcane, but generally, you're it just, it's the, you get so little cooldown off of it, you just don't feel it when you're fighting the difference like you do the damage. So leather's, like I said, leather's a good backup option if you don't have spec and cloth or you don't want to spec cloth, but cloth is better. Plate, it's the worst. Plate's tanky, yes. Um, if you're solo, though, plate's really only good for group play. You're either going to lower damage of the enemy, control the fight, or support. So as far as solo goes, all it's just the damage is too low in plate. Only, you know, the only exception to that may be, like, if you're running a soldier armor, well executed, use your ability well, uh, use your R well, and then you, you're running Muzak Lantern a little more damage but even that is going to be low dps comparatively to the leather or cloth so for that reason play is the worst solo armor type okay now if you're in a group it's a little different i would say the best for a group is plate demon armor judicator guardian armor knight armor these are the best support um royal jacket it's not a uh, plate but that's with those that group um just support support disruptive uh, that's the kind of stuff you want for your uh, group PvP. So play would be the best. Uh, second best being cloth. Why DPS? If you're not going to be a supporter tank, you want to be a DPS. So 
because other than the Royal Jacket support, there's really no leather that makes sense in the context of group PvP. So cloth would be second best for DPS, plate be best for tank support, leather being the worst, um, because it provides none of those things. They you just get either boost buffs to themselves that you really can't take advantage of as arcane, or they get defensives that there's better options. Okay, so that being said, we'll talk about food. Alright. As far as food goes, as when you're in a group, it's pretty dang simple. Omelette for cast speed and cooldown. Almost Magic Shock and Energy Bolt both benefit from cast speed reduction, so omelette's pretty much the go-to. Um, if you're by yourself, there is some builds that take advantage of Roast for Lifesteal, because there's a lot of arcane builds, solo arcane builds that are very high DPS. Energy Bolt, Scholar Robes, Royal Robes, Druid Robes, there's just people that play, they know. Lanterns, Misax, uh, Scholar Robe, Lantern, just one hand, there's all kinds of crazy builds we're gonna keep. That can take advantage of Roast to heal a lot, and it's, and it's viable. But other than the Lifesteal, Omelette's pretty much the best option. The only exception being, there's something to be said for Eel, the damage cast speed bo boost um, food, if you are using a Tome offhand and you already have more cast speed. Because there's diminishing returns, around 20% cast speed reduction. The 30% you really notice less and less, you get less re reward for adding more of it. There's something to be said for using the eel damage reduction, cooldown reduction damage increase and you, when you have Tome. But other than Tome, there's really no justification for anything other than Omelette, other than Rose for Lifesteal, as we already talked about. And, you know, if you really want sustain, you can use Cultist Robe with an Omelette. So, Lifesteal, like I said, Lifesteal is very situational. But Potions. If solo, best is Giant. Why? Best effective HP. You get the best damage reduction. All damage is pretty much in half, even with the Tier 5 Giant Potion. Um, the resist only take you to about 40%. They give you a CC reduction bonus, but solo 1v1s, you really don't need that. It's just not as useful. The second best potion being resist. Has that damage reduction. Not as good as giant, but it is still good. Third, healing. Healing's useful. You cut the enemy around a while, you heal up. Uh, especially, you get a lot of damage on them early, you heal up almost to full, and you can really take advantage of that health gap. So healing would be number three. It's still defensive. Uh, number four would be poison. Now, it's nice getting damage on them, but, you know, the way the kiting playstyle is of Arcane, I just think we'd benefit more from defensives to prevent bursts from the enemy. Is more of a threat reduction is more of a priority of the potion than a little extra damage and resist lowering, you know, resistance decreasing the enemy. So potions, poison is probably number four. If you're ganking alone in a road, yeah, poison for dismounting, but generally 1v1 solo combat poison stink. Number five, sticky. Slowing people, that's really not a problem with most of our builds for solo because we're going to already have mobility as our highest priority in our build, so therefore we're not going to really need a sticky potion to benefit from it. All right, potion to fit group. Resist, the best. Um, you don't want a giant potion to group because it will reduce half your healing, so that's why it's only good for solo. It stinks for group, so. Resist. Defensive boost, but no healing reduction. Number two, sticky. Uh, helping your group secure the kill, peeling for your healer. People don't realize you can use a sticky to slow the uh, DPS, enemy DPS and tanks, bruisers that are on your healers. Uh, so sticky is really good for group. Number three being poison. If you're a low DPS tank or support and you want to help a little damage, throw poison in there. It's not a bad idea. Uh, number four being giant, you're going to reduce your heals. So it's not the, it's not good, but it's not the worst because number five is healing. You do not want to use in a group. You will get healing sickness and grief your healer and grief the healing you get from your healer. So we don't want to use healing potions in a group ever if we don't have to. Okay, next we'll be moving on. Okay, I got my build. I'm ready. I'm either solo in a group. Now what? Okay, you're going to pick a road. Now what kind of road you pick is a big deal. Uh, if you pick a road by one of the traditional royal cities, you know, other than Carleon, uh, not in Black Zone, for so Royal Continent but not Carleon, you have a lot higher chance of running into new players. When you run these chests, they'll either be newer players or players that aren't as try-hard, you know, more of like mid-level gear, mid-level IP, get more casual. So for more casual, inexperienced, you know, uh, less competitive experience, probably better for beginners or new PV people new to PvP, you're going to want to run roads by those royal cities like Bridgewatch, like Thetford, like Martlock. I'm not going to name them all, but you get the idea. Run them like a zone or two out of the royal city. Blue zones, yellow zones. Uh, really casual places. They'll be lower tier. Yes, it will stink if you want to go do chests and dungeons and they'll be lower tier. 
but just for the experience of the PvP and just getting comfortable in roads, just start lower tier. Then when you get comfortable and you don't, you can usually win most of your 1v1s and you're not afraid, then you go to the higher tier ones by Carl Leon, um, Black Zone. Now the reason why I'm saying this is because a lot, most of the roads, guilds, and big road alliances in the Albion have a SOP procedure where, standard operating procedure where, when they go and enter a road, they always start Carl Leon. So when you enter roads by Carleon, the chance of there being hot, really high IP tryhards is way higher than any of the other royals. So for that reason, for a new player, low IP and experience, you're going to start by a royal. The difficulty will greatly increase as you get further away from the newer royal city areas. Okay, so now that we know where we want to pick our roads, what road? I see there's green, blue, yellow, what road? Green road. If you're solo, green road. The bottleneck is only two charges at a time. The, the chances, even when you go in a green road and you might see like one blue portal in there, the chances of you running into a group that way is much, much lower than if you just enter a blue portal. Um, the ideal situation is you enter a green portal that has only green portals in it, and there is no blue or yellow portals, and there is no way a group can come in without a long bottleneck that you'll probably notice before they can become a threat. So we want to pick green roads. Green roads are where you want to go. So, All right, we're in a royal new city. In a green road. Now what? Okay, well, these are the things that you can expect to see in a road. That and what power you should have for them for PvP. In the context of the PvP, because the PvP guide, uh, the first place you're going to want to go when you enter a road is the green chest. Green chest are the highest traffic areas in the road. You are very most likely, if you're going to run into some of the roads, going to be on a green chest. You're going to approach the green chest area. You're going to dismount from your mount. You're going to walk up, and pretty often you're going to see someone or some people clearing that chest. So, okay, that's where we're going to go first, green chest. After you've checked the green chest, then you check the blue chest. Those are group chests. Green chests are solo content for one or two players, and blue chests are for group content. Now, but a lot of solo players solo this blue chest, the group content chest. So they're definitely worth checking. They're the second most common area. The amount of battle axes daggers different people you'll see farming these curse players farming double merch jacket for curses farming these and then you can just walk up and kill them with all their low health so easy and get big paydays it's pretty often so green chest blue chest then you check the static dungeons those are the solo green static dungeons you see on the map or the i wouldn't recommend checking the group dungeons as a solo player as a group a couple friends sure go check the static group dungeons but they usually have a couple people in them in and in them and that's going to be a more higher risk environment but for a, sta a solo dungeon static go ahead check that out if it's open um, but those are less likely to have people in them they're either usually they're low tier um, people don't want to be bothered with clearing them there'll be mobs in it you just walk in check if there's mobs in there a little past the beginning if there is you just leave um, like I said the chests are more likely to have people so the dungeons you know you can get PvP in the dungeons but we always want to check chests first now once we've checked uh, the dungeons the chest uh, we pretty much checked everything. We don't really want to check the resources. Um, those usually don't have people to gather that you can't gank. So, Okay, now that we've talked about all this stuff, we want to talk about what kind of build do you want to bring your goal when you come. Now, do you want to have... There's builds that are all PvP. They're all in on PvP, and they're really not realistic or reasonable to solo the green chest or the blue chest or the dungeons because they either have mana problems, DPS problems... Because the builds that are good against people are very different than the builds that are good against mobs. I prefer personally hybrid builds that I can clear the chest. That way if I'm having bad luck fighting PvP, I clear some content, I get less frustrated, I get some money out of it. So I recommend a hybrid build, but that's up to you. Sometimes I do run just PvP builds. I run, I just check the chest, I check everything. If there's no one there, I leave. I don't even bother PvE. So that's a personal choice you're going to have to make. Um, I'd say the most important things that consider though when you are solo is mobility and sustain the lifesteal healing cultist robe uh lifesteal food uh merc jack whatever just you need to think about sustain if you're alone so you don't get approached at low health and get killed by your pv all right now we're going to talk about abilities and matchups okay so i run into x player what ability should i use torment i'm going to tell you in the context of 1v1 pvp matchups you run into a sword player, you should use Energy Bolt Mimic. Well, why, Tormac, should I use Energy Bolt Mimic? 
because there's certain melee weapons and s some magic weapons and range weapons that it's kind of like a DPS race, and the double magic shocks are not disruptive enough to make up for the lack of damage, so you're just going to lose the DPS race. Sword is one of the weapons you risk losing a DPS race to. So to ensure we win the DPS race, we're going to use Energy Bolt, Aggressive Caster Passive, and we're going to use Mimic Magic Shocks from a distance and Disruptively Up Close to stack extra damage. But we're going to rely on Energy Bolts when they come in close. Uh, axe, you encounter an Axe player, same strategy. Energy Bolt, Magic Shocks. You're going to try to stack as much Magic Shock damage as you can from afar. Uh, before they get near you, you you know you abuse a force field bop or some other ability to get keep your distance. Then when they close the distance in to put damage on you, you start energy bolt, aggressive caster, and you just burn them down. You will win that DPS race. Trust me. Okay, bow, bow. They you don't want to fight a bow with energy bolt. So bow is just double magic shocks, and you really want to abuse distance. You don't want them to be able to auto attack you, click you at all. You want to just abuse that maximum range and kiting because. They're multi shots, and you will, their multi shots will interrupt your energy bolts, and they also could just win the DPS race in a man fight. So we don't want a man fight that we just want a double magic shock kite. So against bows, double magic shock, crossbow, double magic shock. Super simple matchup. You can interrupt everything they want to do. Very easy fight. Always double magic shocks to interrupt their E, their Q, their W. They can't do anything. They'll completely crush. You've seen videos on the channel on one v twoing, one v three in crossbows. Crushing them, very easy matchup. Okay, enough said. Fire Staff, very similar to Crossbow. All their abilities are channeled, have cast time, so double magic shock makes it so they can't do anything, you will shit on them. Same with Frost Staff, same with Fire Staff. Double magic shock, interrupt everything they want to do. Um, easy 1v1 matchup, almost impossible to lose. Okay, Daggers. Now this is very important, listen. For all Daggers, if... They are invis, so if they're death givers or they have assassin hood, invis built in their hellion shoes, invis built into their build, double magic shocks. Because you can magic shock someone who's invis and magic shock someone who's about to come out of invis and silence them and then get some distance. Magic shock is very good against invis builds. So if they have invis, double magic shocks. If they don't have invis and they're just like a blood letter with a hellion, blood letter with a cleric, one hand dagger, energy bolt. Uh, mimic for similar reason as axe and sword when they come close the distance you just burn them with aggressive caster energy bolt easy matchup okay so enough said invis double magic shock no invis or blood letter energy bolt magic shock curse energy bolt magic shock you simply will lose the dps race with double magic shock unless you can keep your distance the entire time which against a competent curse player you won't so you will just lose the dps race so i highly recommend energy bolt magic shock um, while they're stacking their stacks, you're just burning them with aggressive caster. And you usually will win that DPS race. Instead of them trying to chase you, you'll be chasing them. <laughs> so I like that change up of dynamic. So for curse, energy bolt, magic shock. Uh, hammer, double magic shock kite. Very simple. Double magic shock kite. Um, you could also run cleanse energy bolt because hammers are low DPS and the cleanse is very beneficial. Um, but that's a little riskier, a little more higher difficulty, so just double magic shock hiding. You can be almost all hammers. Uh, quarter staff, energy bolt cleanse. Interrupt their stuns with the cleanse. Energy bolt, you will all just out deep. There's really no quarter staff other than a demon cape, grail seeker combo that will out DPS you, even just your energy bolts. So as long as you run cleric hood, sterling cape, and we have cleanse built into this already, uh, so you don't get one shotted by that. The Grail Seeker, any other quarter staff should be easy to deal with. Just Energy Bull, Aggressive Caster. You'll win that DPS race. You have Cleanse for kiting or chasing them. Cleansing their stuns or chasing them down. And, uh, of course, that's an easy matchup. Mace, Double Magic Shot Kiting. It's similar to Hammer. Uh, Mace is, uh, because of the iframe on one-handed Mace, it can be a hard matchup because during the iframe, you can waste your bop and they can land their E and then do a Carleon Cave Double Q, Threatening Swing. So they can be, oh, they can burst you down. It's a, Mace is probably the hardest matchup for Arcane. So any really difficult, if you're ever having a matchup that's really difficult, I just recommend doing max kiting. Just get a horn, get refreshing sprint, get double magic shock, and just kite from across the screen. And that's the way I deal with Mace. Okay, so for spear, you're going to want energy bolt and magic shock for the same reasons axe, sword, and daggers. Um, generally speaking, you want to abuse the magic shock from afar, and then when they come in to do auto attack damage or to close the gap, you take advantage of energy bolt and 
aggressive cast or passive to stack up the damage and win the DPS race. Okay, so before I wrap this video up, I just want to make sure I mention though, guys, if you're seeing me doing things in these videos and you can't replicate them, remember, spec is important. Spec is important. The IP is important. Curse and Arcane disproportionately, their damage disproportionately scales with IP comparatively to all the other weapons in Albion. All, all weapons get damage boosts from their IP, but Curse and Arcane just get way bigger damage boosts proportionate to their IP increase compared to other weapons. So IP really feeds the damage. So spec is important. Um, and remember, minor boots are your friend, okay? If you don't have magic shocks, and you want to go on roads in PvP, but you're afraid of getting jumped, or you keep getting jumped and losing gear, and you're getting frustrated, use minor boots. Go spend a little time gathering if you haven't. Get to your form in uh, ore mining and get your minor boots. Because minor boots fix the mobility problem pretty much every single build in the game. If, you have any, if there's any build in the game that's great and everything except for has the mobility problem, minor boots will fix that. Because if you get jumped or you're ever about to die or 20% health, you just minor boot away. If there's four guys chasing you, you get away, you mount up, you get away. So minor boots can save. There's so many builds that can be saved with minor boots. So experiment with them. And uh, that's it for the first guide, Rhodes PvP Arcane. We went over the matchups, we went over the builds, we went over the food, the weapons, the potions. And that's it. I'm out.